from Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube covering LiveWorks 18. Brought to you by PTC. Welcome back to the Seaport in Boston, everybody. You're watching the Cube, the leader in live tech coverage, and my name is Dave Vellante. We're here. This is day one of the PTC Live Work Show, the confluence of. Internet of Things, edge computing, AI, blockchain, security, a lot of innovation going on here in this new industry that's, that's being formed out of a lot of older in existing incumbent industries. Lieutenant Bruce Litchfield is here. He's the VP of Sustainment Operations at Lockheed Martin. Bruce, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks, David. How are you today? I'm doing great, thanks. It's a good show here, a lot of, a lot of excitement, a lot of really interesting demos. We see a lot of movement here, but I wonder if you could talk about your military experience and how it relates to your current role at Lockheed Martin. Sure, so I spent uh, 30 plus years in the military and I retired as Lieutenant General. So well thank you for your service, really. It, you know, it's an honor to serve and, and mm -hmm. time went by fast and really got to work with some great people. And when you have that in your blood, uh, it's hard to walk away <laughs> and, and not continue service. So I got a chance to work with Lockheed Martin who delivers the products uh, and builds the products that I grew up with in the Air Force. Most of my career was in the sustainment and, and keeping them flying kind of aspect of, of the Air Force. So now I get to work on them uh, from a corporate perspective and, and continue to deliver products and capabilities and upgrade them so that uh, tomorrow can be better than today and that the folks out in the field make sure that when the systems are needed and, and they have to use them, they're ready, capable, and, and to go to work, okay. do whatever so, do. Okay, so sustainment is in your title, and, and that's your current role. So by sustainment, you mean it works when you need it to work. Is that, describe that a little bit. That's right, so I mean, I, I use a simple term, keep them flying. And when you think about that, uh, all over the world, 365 days a year, 24 seven, you never know when a mission needs to take off or, or a, a soldier, sailor, airman, marine might need a capability to save a life, change the course of a battle, or otherwise make a difference. And if a Lockheed Martin system's involved, I want to make sure it's there and, and ready to go, and uh, they don't have to worry about whether it's going to be able to succeed in the mission. So what's the role of, of technology in keeping systems up? I mean, in the IT world, it used to be just get two of everything, or three of everything, or four of everything, and just make things redundant. You know, that thinking obviously has evolved, but, but what tech uh, is Lockheed Martin bringing to this problem? So, if, if you look over the systems, and, and, and I'll just take, I came from the Air Force. And so the Air Force is flying uh, weapon systems that are 50 plus years old, along with, we are delivering now uh, the F-35, which is the absolute latest in technology and capability. And so when I look at the evolution of technology over that time, it really is, very impressive, and, and, and I, I really do term sustainment as a systems engineering problem. It's making sure the part is there, it's making sure the system's reliable, it's making sure the tech data, it's making sure the support equipment, anything that the maintenance person may need to, to get that jet uh, airborne, got to make sure it's there at the right time, at the right place. And so if you look at the technology of how it's evolved over the year, it's much the same as, is our capability to go to war is from, a, from a, what I would consider the command and control of World War II where you just launched the jet. In fact, we, we talked about it today. Uh, for one raid in World War II, it took almost 200 bombers to hit one target dropping over uh, almost uh, half a million tons of munitions. To today, one aircraft can hit multiple targets with precision accuracy. And, and keeping our, our uh, airmen safe. So uh, technology's evolved along with how we sustain aircraft has really evolved so, over that time. Frame. So much more software obviously involved yes, in true. aircraft today. How has the industry dealt with the increasing complexity as a result of things like software and code, but at the same time, it's clearly delivering more reliable systems and more efficient systems as you just described. That's right, so, so think about it in this way. Underpinning an inherent uh, capability, such as the F-35, is the reliability of the system. So if I just take that one weapon system, so we have right now delivered over 300 aircraft, and they're bedded down at over 14 locations around the world. 74% of the items in that aircraft have never failed over the time that they've been out there, and including over about 100,000 hours worth of flight hours. 
Then when you start looking at that, almost 94% of them meet or exceed their liability requirements. So now we're just down to a few parts that we've got to make sure that we improve through regular you know, upgrades that you would do under any normal conditions to make the most reliable system. Then on top of that, you put the software embedded into the aircraft that helps the folks on the flight line know what's failed, where it's failed, and then how to troubleshoot. And so you brought technology to a point of what I would call the human interaction on the flight line. And, and we talk a lot about you know, predictive maintenance, anticip anticipating failures. Presumably that's part of this uh, capability. Is that, I mean, how real is that? Is it in action today? Is it sort of a future thing, or can you talk about that? So, it's very much in action today, and we have a predictive health, and what we're really trying to drive to is a condition-based maintenance airplane. In other words, if you think about uh, going to a commercial airline, you don't want, you know, you don't want it to fly to fail, you want to make sure that whenever you show up, that it's ready to, you, you board it and you take off. Well, we're, trying, we're evolving uh, the technology that evolves us to go to a condition-based maintenance so we can do maintenance you know, on the off time when the aircraft's not needed or in what I would call a scheduled kind of time frame. And that helps ensure that we don't just, it's, it's mission ready whenever the, the pilots need it or whenever the sortie requirements call for it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the challenges that, that you guys face in terms of bringing technology and sustaining this technology into you know, whatever generation of, of aircraft. I think we're in fifth generation today. That's right. Well, first of all, access, what's fifth generation and what are some of the challenges that you face? All right, so, so let's start with fifth gen. So when, from an operational perspective, when someone says fifth gen technology, it's really taking into account what I would consider low observability or, or other words, making the aircraft hard to detect. It's putting avionics sensors on there so that the pilot knows what's going on around them and is able to, to fuse that information to give them very exquisite information of what's happening on the battlefield and then be able to keep those that you know, are supporting him informed of what's happening. It's high maneuverability of the weapon system as well as speed uh, that it goes. So there's, there's the technology aspects of fifth gen. And then what, what I like to refer to is fifth gen sustainment, and that's really what the focus we are doing at Lockheed Martin. And what we want to be able to do is being fifth gen sustainment capability of the field and drive the cost down so it's at a fourth gen or below the price of what current systems are. So get new technology, modern technology, sustain it at a very uh, high readiness rate at a cost lower than, than what they currently see today. So fifth for fourth is one of the mantras that we're trying to deliver, or, or at least drive the cost down as low as possible. And one of the challenges that I would say is, is that that balance okay. between how do you have, you know, insert capability and then keep the cost down. And so you have to do things differently. You have to evolve to a new way of looking. So we talked about uh, condition-based maintenance or evolving to it in a, in a capability where you don't fly to fail. You do it when the system's down or when you, when you do it on a scheduled basis to do that. At the same time, you have to integrate all the capabilities together for for software, uh, to bring in uh, analytics into uh, the capabilities that you have, and prognostics kind of uh, maintenance uh, to the field. And so it's a systems engineering, a complex instrument, systems engineering problem. And really that's what makes, uh, you know, kind of I would call the strength of Lockheed Martin, which prides itself on being a technology company making tomorrow better than today. Yeah, and a systems thinker. And uh, a systems thinker. Uh, when you talk about these capabilities, observability, avionics capabilities, maneuverability, increased speeds, it just jumps on my head, data. That's so right. Let's talk about the role of data and, and analytics. I mean, the data explosion here. How are you dealing with all that data? So, so we get, close to uh, a terabyte worth of information you know, a day. And then how you exploit that really uh, goes across the entirety of, of what I would call the sustainment uh, ecosystem. And if you look at it, sustainment probably, we can break it down into about 11 different areas. So whether it's supply chain, whether it's managing the inventory that we have within the supply chain, whether it's in reliability, prognostics, whether it's in the maintenance, repair, and overhaul mm -hmm. capability. So we're bringing analytics across the entire uh, spectrum of, of that, and what we're out doing right now is getting best of breed capabilities so that we can piece together a holistic picture uh, to better sustain this weapon system. So data is the key to doing that. At the end of the day, 
It's how do you bring that data and then bring it to what I would call the analog piece or the human being at the flight line that still has to maintain the parts, but we want to make sure the right part is at the right place at the right time. So the human's still the, the, the last mile. Uh, the, that terabyte a day, is the majority of that stored? Is it, per, is it persisted or is a lot of it kind of throwaway data? Can no, I mean, sort? the great news is we capture that data and so we have a chance to go utilize it to improve, um, you know, not only what tomorrow is, but if I look at analytics uh, for sustainment piece, I look at it in three pieces. One is a dashboard, all right, where are you? What's the status? Okay, that's good, that's your, that's your speedometer. Mm -hmm. Then it is, how do you do decision aids and tools, which means how do you make better decisions to affect you know, maybe tomorrow's operation? And then there's a the third part about it, which is predictive analytics. How do I make decisions today that affect me three to five years apart, and then I can make a decision today and have confidence that down the road, that's absolutely going to be the right decision. And the first two, the status and the decision aids, I mean, those are real time or near real time. Very much so. Pretty much instantaneous that's types right. of things. So that's, that, that's a challenge, obviously, to deal with. It, it is, and then, you know, we, we are dealing with a, a defense. So you got to be always cognizant of security, cyber security, and making sure that, that what you do keeps that data safe and make sure that no one be able to tamper with it so that you're making real-time decisions based on, uh, on, the, on the known capabilities of the data and where it comes from. Well, Bruce, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. I hope you're enjoying the live work show and it was really a pleasure having you. David, thank you. It's a great show and it's great to be here. Our pleasure. Okay, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. You're watching theCUBE live from LiveWorks in Boston. We'll be right back. <laughs>